The orbit of the planet Mercury is a bit strange and doesn't act exactly as expected. This was such a problem that we even invented another planet to account for its weird orbit. In fact, it's this strangeness that provided evidence that Einstein was right all along. Let's find out more. This video was suggested in a comment, so thank you Stephanie for the suggestion, and if anyone else has any suggestions then leave a comment below please. Before we talk about Mercury, and we'll get to that, we need to talk about Einstein and relativity. In fact, let's go back even further to the time of Newton. When Newton devised his laws of gravity, he knew that gravity exists as a result of the force that massive bodies have on other bodies. Massive bodies feel an attractive force between each other, and this can be used to explain why apples fall from trees, and also why planets orbit the sun, and so on. However, Newton didn't understand what exactly causes the force that we call gravity. But for the majority of observations and calculations, Newtonian gravity works very well indeed, and could be used to predict the movement of the planets and moons, all except for Mercury. When Einstein came along, he devised the general theory of relativity. This states, among other things, that gravity, rather than being a force felt between two objects, is actually caused by the warping of space-time. Objects in the universe tend to try to move in straight lines. However, the warping of space-time will mean that a body that moves towards a massive body like a planet or a star will have its motion bent into a circular orbit by the warping of space-time. The theory of general relativity also says that gravity affects time, and that time flows at different speeds the closer you get to a massive body. The closer you are, the slower the passage of time. This effect is relatively small when considering a body the size of the Earth. The core of our planet, being the closest to the centre of gravity, is about two and a half years younger than the crust of the planet. In other words, time has passed more slowly for the core of our planet than the crust. But that's two and a half years over the four and a half billion year life of our planet. So that's not a great deal. However, the stronger the gravity, the greater the time dilation. Near to black holes, time will pass even more slowly but that's for another video. So what has all this got to do with Mercury? The planets orbit the Sun, but their orbits aren't perfect circles. They're ellipses, as we can see here. When the planet is closest to the Sun, we call this the perihelion, and the point at which the planet is furthest away from the Sun is called the aphelion. In addition to this, the planets don't travel around their orbit at the same speed. As a planet gets closer to the Sun, it speeds up. This is because, and this is very much a simplification of what's really going on, there are two kinds of energy controlling the orbit of the planet. These are gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. The sum of these two energies must always be equal. Gravitational potential energy is related to the distance between the two bodies. When the two bodies are the closest, the gravitational potential energy is at its minimum. When they are furthest away, the gravitational potential energy is at its maximum. A bit like if I have a ball and I hold it one metre from the Earth, it will have some potential energy. If I move the ball so now it's 10 metres from the Earth, it's got greater potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of movement. A higher kinetic energy is related to a higher speed. Because kinetic energy and potential energy must always add up to the same amount, the higher the gravitational potential energy, the lower the kinetic energy, so the lower the speed. Conversely, the lower the gravitational potential energy, the higher the kinetic energy, and so the higher the speed. In fact, Kepler's second law states that if I was to cut the orbit up into sectors of equal area, the planet would spend equal times in each sector. I've drawn this in a very exaggerated way, but if the planet was taking equal times going through each sector, it would have to speed up to make it round these sectors here 
in the same time that it would take it to move around these sectors here. All planets then have an elliptical orbit, but Mercury's orbit is very elliptical, and it's only because of the elliptical orbits that we get to the next part of our story, and this is called precession. Precession is the change to the elliptical orbits that happens as the planets orbit the Sun. Each orbit follows a slightly different path to the previous one. The perihelion of each orbit is moved slightly from the previous. And this happens as the elliptical orbits rotate slowly, as I've shown here again in an exaggerated way. Precession is caused largely by the effect the other planets have on each other as they orbit. The other planets in the solar system exert a gravitational pull on each other, and this is what causes the orbit of each of the planets to precess. And here's where we get to our problem. The precession of Mercury isn't what it's expected to be. Using calculations based on the mathematics of Newton, it was calculated that the orbit of Mercury should precess by 531 seconds of arc per century. One second of arc is one 3600th of a degree. So 531 seconds of arc is about a sixth of a degree per century. These calculations take into account the effect that the other planets have on each other, also the slight deformation of the Sun due to its spin, and the fact that the Earth is rotating and orbiting, and is therefore not an inertial frame of reference. However, measurements of the precession of Mercury give a value of 574 seconds of arc per century. That's a discrepancy of 43 arc seconds per century. Now that might not seem like a lot, but the discrepancy should be very close to zero. A number of different fixes were suggested for this discrepancy, including dust lying between the Sun and Mercury, and even an extra planet closer to the Sun affecting the orbit of Mercury. This planet was even given a name, Vulcan. All of these fixes, however, were abandoned eventually. It was found that Einstein's theory of general relativity accounted for the additional precession. This means that even if there were no other planets or any other factors causing the precession of Mercury, the orbit of Mercury would still precess because of the curvature of space-time caused by the Sun. The extra precession that happens in Mercury and Venus and Earth to a smaller extent, those extra 43 seconds of arc are caused by the curvature of space-time, and that's because of the huge gravitational presence of the Sun. This is because as Mercury orbits and moves towards its perihelion, it moves further and further into the Sun's gravity well, where space-time is more and more curved, and this makes the position of the perihelion move with each orbit. So what does this all mean? Well, general relativity says that in a gravity well, time runs slower than clocks would do further away from that gravity well, and the Earth, whilst not as strong as the Sun, has considerable gravity of its own. This means, as I've already mentioned, that clocks on Earth would run slower than clocks in orbit. And whilst this discrepancy might be minuscule, it's important. GPS systems use satellites to very accurately determine the location of the device that's using it. These days, pretty much every smartphone uses this technology. And this time discrepancy needs to be built into the software that governs these systems so that we can accurately find our way to the nearest coffee shop. I've decided to come to Mercury and have a little look round. If you enjoy my journeys around the universe, then please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell icon thingy. And for now, and until next time, thank you for watching.